Lunch at the Gotham Cafe. One day I came home from the brokerage house where I worked and found a letter, more of a note actually, from my wife on the dining room table. It said she was leaving me, that she was pursuing a divorce, that I would hear from her lawyer. I sat on the chair at the kitchen end of the table, reading this communication over and over again, not able to believe it. After a while, I got up, went into the bedroom, and looked in the closet. All her clothes were gone except for one pair of sweatpants and a joke sweatshirt someone had given her with the words, Rich Blonde, printed on the front in spangly stuff. I went back to the dining room table, which was actually at one end of the living room. It was only a four-room apartment, and read the six sentences over again. It was the same, but looking into the half-empty bedroom closet had started me on the way to believing what it said. It was a chilly piece of work, that note. There was no love or good luck or even best at the bottom of it. Take care of yourself was as warm as it got. Just below that, she had scratched her name, Diane. I walked into the kitchen, poured myself a glass of orange juice, then knocked it onto the floor when I tried to pick it up. The juice sprayed onto the lower cabinets and the glass broke. I knew I would cut myself if I tried to pick up the glass. My hands were shaking, but I picked it up anyway, and I cut myself. Two places, neither deep. I kept thinking that it was a joke, then realizing it wasn't. Diane wasn't much of a joker. But the thing was, I didn't see it coming. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know if that made me stupid or insensitive. As the days passed, and I thought about the last six or eight months of our two-year marriage, I realized I had been both. That night, I called her folks in Pound Ridge and asked if Diane was there. She is, and she doesn't want to talk to you, her mother said. Don't call back. The phone went dead in my ear. Two days later, I got a call at work from Diane's lawyer, who introduced himself as William Humboldt, and after ascertaining that he was indeed speaking to Stephen Davis, began calling me Steve. I suppose that's a little hard to believe, but it's what happened. Lawyers are so bizarre. Humboldt told me I would be receiving preliminary paperwork early the following week and suggested I prepare an account overview prefatory to dissolving your domestic corporation. He also advised me not to make any sudden fiduciary movements and suggested that I keep our receipts for items purchased, even the smallest, during this financially difficult passage. Sample complete. Ready to continue?